What's going on everyone? This is your host, Overlord57, and in honor of Ryan Reed winning the nation or uh, the Xfinity race tonight rather, I am going to do a race at Daytona in Ryan Reed's car. Some of you may not know this, but Ryan Reed has an amazing story behind him. Four years ago, he was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes and was told he would never drive a race car ever again. Well, this is his second year in the Nationwide Series. Tonight, he has won the Nation, or the, excuse me, the Xfinity race tonight. He has won it at Daytona. So we're going to go ahead and try and repeat that here on NASCAR 14. Now, since NASCAR 14 doesn't have the Xfinity Series, we're going to have to do it against Sprint Cup drivers. So that's going to up the level of competition even more. All assists for this race are off. AI difficulty is 100%. Here's the car that Ryan Reed drives. The green flag is out and we are underway here at Daytona and I'm just going to slice to the bottom immediately. I'm going to see if I can pick up a lot of Clint Boyer I'm down here. This is not a black flag because I was forced down here. This Clint Boyer did not give me room. I have Josh Wise behind me now. I'm under AJ Allmendinger. I hope he knows that. Okay, he does. But I want to get to the front here really fast because I don't want to get left hanging here in the back. I want to get moving because the other 16 car of Greg Biffle is in front of me now. Contact up ahead. Biffle, pick a lane. Oh, yeah. Josh Wines got below me. That's nice. That outside lane is moving. I'm going to move up there. Oh, well, now it's not moving. Michael and Ed. Jeez. Well, that... What? What was... Oh my gosh. One minute the outside lane is moving, but the second I move up there, it slows down. Man, now I'm going to be at the back, which is not where I want to be. Meh, I'm not too far back. Not as far back as I thought I would be. So, your front four are Tony Stewart, Trevor Bain, Danica Patrick, and Jeff Gordon. Running out the top ten is Jamie McMurray. And I'm going to restart in the 36th position, so I actually gained a spot. I don't know how, but I gained a spot. Wow, well that didn't take very long. The nationwide race went like 80 some odd laps without caution. But then at the end I think it had upwards of a half a dozen. By the way, what a hard hit that Kyle Busch took in that nationwide race. That was a difficult hit for him. I hope he's okay. I'm not the biggest fan of Kyle Busch, but I, it's, you just don't like to see drivers get hurt like that. Murray McReynolds said it best. NASCAR drivers should not be racing at tracks that don't have safer barriers on the outside and inside retaining walls. And I hope NASCAR looks back at this and goes, wow, we need to put safer barriers down there. Because they really do. Just like they need to do at Watkins Glen. There's been a couple of horrific crashes there. Okay. I'm going to move down to the inside lane here. That is exactly why, too. Because I knew that outside lane was going to slow down again. But, uh, also, what a hard hit Regan Smith took in that nationwide race. He had a car that ran up front most of the night. The guy bogged back in traffic a little bit, and he ended up flipping and landing on all fours. Okay, Dave Reagan's checking up. I'm just going to go to the inside of all of you. Excuse me, pardon me. This is Ryan Reed coming through. But, uh, it was a great nationwide race. I was really glad that NASCAR let him race back to the line. That really, as a fan, made me enjoy that race a lot more. Alright, Hamlin, you're slowing down. Man, I should have stayed in that middle lane. Okay, Hamlin. Hamlin. Hamlin is making me nervous right now. I don't know why. But yeah, that nationwide race had its... It definitely had its high points. Props to NASCAR for letting him finish, too. That was my second favorite moment of the race. First favorite was when Ryan Reed won it. That was cool. Kevin Harvick was talking about the uh, the whole race, how he wanted to see an underdog win. And look what happened. Ryan Reed ended up winning it. Alright, we're going to be behind Cole Witt here for a while. Because the way I see it, I have nowhere to go. So enjoy staring at the back bumper of Cole Witt for like maybe another lap or two. He is slowing down for whatever reason. I'm going to give him some room. 
Alex Bowman, don't you drop. Don't you drop. I'm moving you now. I said don't drop down. What'd you do? You drop down. So now, now you know what? Now you're going backwards. Alright, so I'm up to 13th here. We're on the fifth lap. And let's not forget that on the first lap, there was a crash between me and Michael Annette. I tried to move up to the outside lane, and it just didn't work out. Okay, JJ Ailey. Alright, I'm going to stick to this low line, because that's the lane that's moving. Is the bottom lane. So enjoy Colwood's bumper again. I hope you guys like Speed Stick. I, I'm personally an Old Spice guy, but <laughs> that's just my preference. <laughs> Hopefully we can get up in the top 10 here pretty soon. We're coming to 14 laps to go at the strike. Cole Witt's checking up again. Again. I'm getting around you, Cole Witt. I'm pretty sure my fans are tired of staring at your back bumper. Oh, we're, we are four wide. We're four wide. Four wide. Keep it low. Keep it low. Okay, now we're back down to three wide. And Dale Hart Jr. is now the race leader. I'm right behind Jimmy Johnson. I'm going to give him a little push if he doesn't move up. Me and Jimmy Johnson are going right to the race lead. Now I'm going to look under Jimmy Johnson. Ladies and gentlemen, Ryan Reed has taken the race lead here at Daytona. And there's the guy who was involved in the first caution, Mike Lynette, is right behind me now. Remember, he's the one who got turned head on into the wall. He's right behind me now. Look at that. Parker Kligerman's up there in that middle lane, too. Mike Lynette's going to look hot. i got to stay low, though. I'm going to stay low. I'm going to try to keep this lead for a while. So it took me basically eight laps to get to the front. But, uh, oh, Lord. I got tied off of two. I got tied off of two, and now I'm still in the wall. Why am I in the wall? Gosh dang it. Well, yeah, I guess I wasn't kidding when I said I was going to drop to the back. All right, now let's see how long it takes for you to get back to the front. Um, well, I have nowhere to go now, so it might take a while to get to the front. Hopefully it doesn't take too long, because we're just under halfway, or just, uh, before halfway, I should say. I'm going to look underneath you, Danica. Oh, you're making me nervous. Stop making me nervous. Now you're sideways. She almost didn't make it into the Daytona 500. Which would have been kind of ironic. I'm not going to lie. Uh, yeah. Oh, I was going to look underneath Josh Wise, but then I thought better of it. I need to preserve my car for the uh, last few laps. Got into the wall off the uh, back stretch a couple laps ago and it kind of stalled my momentum. I bogged up the whole outside lane. Okay, Josh Wise. Oh, yeah. Well, we're back at the top 10. So it's only taken me a few laps this time to get to the front, which is kind of weird. Okay. Kurt Bush is your leader. He's been having some big news going on around him. I gotta get down to block Casey Mears. I can't give up the inside lane. But, um, yeah, Kurt Busch has some really big news swirling around him. He, uh, was indefinitely suspended by NASCAR for, um, something related to his girlfriend. I don't know what happened, but to me, if it was up to me, NASCAR shouldn't have intervened on a driver's personal affairs like that. But, uh, I, got, I am anticipating uh, Regan Smith to take over for him, though. I like Regan Smith. He's a good driver. Remember, he won the, uh, Regan Smith did, won the Southern 500 with, uh, Furniture Row Racing. The car that Martin Truex Jr. drives. So, uh, yeah, Regan Smith def definitely has some cup experience under his belt. Remember, he also subbed for, uh, Tony Stewart last season, along with, uh, I think Austin Dillon also subbed in for him. Or maybe that was Mark Martin who subbed for Tony Stewart. I can't remember. But uh, Regan, either way, Regan Smith has some cup experience under his belt. So I'm in, And Regan Smith said 
that um, he had a Kurt Busch's car potentially had a shot to win the race, which was also pretty good for him. Whoa, Casey Kane behind me. Trying to whiplash it out to the middle. It did not work. But I'm still commanding this race. I'm just taking the inside lane with me. How do you like Ryan Reed's scheme, by the way? Hang on, let me drive straight here. I think it's a pretty cool scheme, personally. I'm not going to be able to get, give you guys a good view of it, because, <laughs> quite frankly, anytime I've tried to, I've either sliced down to the inside, or something bad's happened, so... We'll just go ahead and stay up in this view for now and try to win the race. You know what? We're going to go on board a lap here at Daytona. Let's go on board a lap. Well, Austin Dillon trying to move to the middle. Now Michael McDowell's looking at my outside. He got there. And look at Kyle Larson in the 42 car, up to second in my rearview mirror. Kyle Larson uh, was involved in that last lap crash in the Nationwide race. He and, uh, I think it was Ross Chastain, were involved in a last lap crash. But Kyle Larson, definitely, he had his hands full of that entire Nationwide race. Uh, let's see here. He was... He narrowly avoided two crashes. Uh, one in which involved Regan Smith flipping. And the other one was, um... When... Oh, who was? Uh, Eric Jones got turned by Kyle Busch. Resulting in Busch hitting the inside wall hard. But yeah, Kyle Larson definitely had an eventful nationwide... Or, excuse, I keep calling it the Nationwide Series. I can't get used to that. It's just, you know, it's you cling to something and you can't let it go. It's like, this is the Nationwide Series. But it's the Xfinity Series, actually. Casey Mears is all over the track behind me. I'm trying to keep it behind me. As we're going to come to this track to five laps to go, into turn number three. But yeah, definitely, Kyle Larson had an eventful uh, Xfinity Series race. See, I got it right that time. I had, to, I had to pause, though, to get it right. Casey Mears wants to get around me. I'm just going to let him go to the outside so he can just kind of stay up there. And I'm going to say that's uh, Regan Smith behind me, because that's who's actually driving that car in the Daytona 500. Oh, Regan Smith made it four wide. That's going to push Danica Patrick all the way to the outside. Now I've got Michael Waltrip behind me. You know what would be really cool on NASCAR? Is if they had like a Legends mode where you can drive as Hall of Famers and stuff. Like, you could drive Daryl Waltrip's car or Richard Petty's car, which I guess you could kind of do because of Eric Almarola. But like, you would actually be show like STP and stuff is would be your sponsor. Tied if you were Daryl Waltrip, stuff like that. I think that would be pretty cool. That's something that they, I think, that they should add, definitely. That would be fantastic, I think. But, uh, we're coming, we are four laps away from completion. And, for, remember, in the Nationwide Series, with I think it was eight laps ago, is when Kyle Busch hit the inside wall hard. So, hopefully, we can stay green, and this race can finish with all 43 cars. The only problem is not all 43 cars are together if you look down at the map. Now I have Jimmy Johnson on my bumper. Michael Waltrip tried to look to the outside. That did not work for him. Is now Shoei Logano. Oh, Johnson! On my outside. I tried to block him, but it just didn't work. Oh, contact! Between Joy Logano and Trevor Bain behind me. That was close. Now it's Trevor Bain coming up behind me. <coughs> Trevor Bain would be in the Xfinity series, but his ride got taken over by Bubba Wallace, and Trevor Bain went to the number six car for Roush Fenway. 
which moved um, Ryan Blaney to the Wood Brothers car. Here comes Tony Stewart now on the bottom side. I gotta get down and block him. Because we're coming to two laps to go at the start finish line. Yeah, I'm excited for the Daytona 500 tomorrow. Whoa! I threw a block on Stewart. I gotta keep the lead. Gotta keep the lead here. But like I was saying, I'm excited for the Daytona 500 tomorrow, Klagerman. I gotta stop moving high. I gotta stop moving high to block. I just have to stay to the inside. That's where the momentum's been this entire race. That's where it has to stay. This middle groove down the back. Okay, Paul Menard, you're going to look to my inside. But uh, I'm really anticipating the Daytona 500 tomorrow. Look at Kyle Busch steaming up the inside lane. Now he's on my bumper. He's got Casey Kane behind him. If Kyle Busch looks to the outside, I'm going to block him. This is, that's Kyle Busch. You can't let him get around you. Here we go, folks. To the stripe. This is the white flag lap. White flag is out. Final lap here at Daytona. Can Ryan Reed secure the victory? Let's find out. As we're going into turn number one for the final time. Kyle Busch on that outside lane. Got to watch out for him going down the back stretch. Paul Menard now is coming up the middle. Come on, Edwards. Give me a bump. Let's go. Kyle Busch has help from Casey Kane. It's going to be wire to wire going into turn number three. Edwards tried to move high. It did not work. Ryan Reed leads him off turn number four. Here they come to the stripe. Ryan Reed is going to go to victory lane here in Daytona. What a win for the rookie. Wow, that was an awesome finish. That was an awesome race. I hope you guys really enjoyed that. I know I did. Let's see who finished in the top 10. Ryan Reed wins the Daytona 5, or excuse me, the, I think it was the drive for COPD 300 here at Daytona. Carl Edwards finishes second. Brian Vickers third. Kyle Busch fourth. Paul Menard fifth. Austin Dillon brings home a sixth place finish. Casey Kane, 7th, Kevin Harvick, 8th, Alex Bowman, 9th, and Josh Wise rounds out the top 10. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this race. It was fun playing it. Let's go back to the main menu here where like, we get to find out who won the, I don't know, Rex White. He looks like the guy. Hopefully. Yeah, I was wrong. Oh, well. Let's see. Who has the most consecutive starts in the Nationwide Series? Oh, it's Tommy Houston, maybe. I don't know. Hopefully it is. Yeah, I was right. Cool. Let's see. Who, uh, zero. He beat him on a tiebreaker, actually. Tony Stewart had to win the race to win the championship. Uh, I want to go with Kyle Busch, because he seems like the guy who would do that. Hey, I was right again. All right, cool. Let's get back to the main menu here. Well, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like. If you were excited to see Ryan Reed win the Nationwide, or er, the uh, Xfinity Series, I keep calling it the Nationwide Series, the Xfinity Series race, be sure to leave a like. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. This is your host, Overlord57, signing out.